All right, what's going on, everybody? Uh, today, we're going to do something a little fun. Uh, I have with me here Simone. Simone, say hi. <laughs> what up, guys? I'm so a guest Simone here. Is, <laughs> Simone is from my Facebook group, the Personal Mastery Quest support group that we run here, which, by the way, is free. So if you are not part of that, I'll leave a link in the description box below. Make sure to join that and join our community. But Simone posted a question the other day in the group regarding self-inquiry. And when I was reading the question, it was a very, very good question. However, at the same time, it was a very silly question. And I say silly because when you're doing the process of self-inquiry, right, the mind is going to come at you with all its little tricks and everything. And it's going to make you kind of get really caught up in that, in those layers of complexity that we, we forget the whole point of self-inquiry. So it's silly in a way where it really distracts you from the point of self-inquiry, but it's so real and so complex when you're actually amidst the the you know the problem and the confusion. So yeah. instead of answering Simone the other day just in the group, right? I thought it would be a really cool way to kind of um, get him on video, really talk him through this, show him how simple it really is, and then also you know it'll help whoever is watching this video. So if you're watching, uh, if you're practicing self inquiry right now, I know this is a confusion that you can easily slip into. So this may be of help to you as well right now. Okay, so. We're just going to have a really casual video today. I really just want to um, talk you, Simone, through this confusion that you're having regarding self-inquiry, okay? okay so okay. Um, I'll put a question, of the question that you asked up on the screen right now. Um, but just go ahead, really explain your confusion regarding self-inquiry and we'll take it from there. Yes, yeah. um, I don't do the, the classic uh, version of self-inquiry, which is uh, who am I through verbal questions, but uh, I use uh, the perception, the seeing method that you discuss. And I concentrate a lot on feeling of the skin, touching, uh, seeing, and I become present, like in classical meditation. At that point, when I'm uh, almost uh, uh, fused in the perception, I try to see uh, where the perceptions uh, point to. And at that exact moment, uh, my thoughts uh, pop in and uh, and all these thoughts that start running in my mind and uh, at that point uh, my monkey mind overwhelms my present moment because uh, uh, when I just have to feel uh, that I am the perceiver I can feel it if I really focus but as soon as I, I question the origin everything uh, collapses <laughs> that's yeah. the problem yeah I think the way that you um, stated in the question that you asked it was like when you try to trace where your perceptions are coming from right you're trying to backtrack your feelings and perceptions to consciousness that's yes. when it, the thoughts arise and it becomes confusing yes so see right there is like a so what do you believe right now right what is what do you from your point of view with what you're learning from self-inquiry and everything what do you believe is the the point of self-inquiry what is the motive of self-inquiry what are we trying to um inquire about uh, to find uh, that uh, pure consciousness that uh, is uh, beyond my self-identity uh, to uh, be only the the perceiver of uh, everything in reality uh, the problem with that is that uh, uh, one of the things that confuses me is that uh, every perception still points at my body at least from my perspective and that confuses me a lot and every time i try Yes, but uh, all this seeing, uh, touching, smelling still points at this body. That's what uh, completely confuses me. Yeah, so see right there, right? You're, you're, the words you use to find this consciousness or whatever is beyond the personal identity. So who would be the one finding it? Right, so who uh, is doing the search and who is finding it? Uh, the search... Uh, at least from my perspective, is done by my identity, by the identity uh, of this person uh, to find uh, its uh, uh, spiritual core, let's say. So, and also look at it this way. You can only really find something that is separate from you, that is outside of you. So can consciousness or awareness be found as an object? Mm. Uh, so the problem is that I separate myself from uh, consciousness, like it's an object. Uh, well, actually, somewhere. that's very, very natural. That is the definition of what we call ego. That is the definition of what we call identity. 
it is this it is the sense of a separate individual a separate self that is separate from all that is it feels very very isolated like an isolated fragment yes that's why it's also like you know it's it's natural state is a state of fear and anxiety kind of like always trying to accumulate the good and trying to run away from the bad yes <laughs> so when you say right that from your perspective this is the one that's doing the searching this this you can say your identity is just mind right yes. it's just your identity is like the idea you have of yourself the belief the the, the belief system the the world view the self image that is what comprises your identity okay and you can say like that the one that you continue to refer to yourself right is the body and mind that's that, that is that simone that's the body and mind with a story and a past right and all these beliefs and everything okay but simone look a little deeper right are these mental identities are, is this body itself is it not observed to to constantly change within an awareness if it does change uh, uh, continuously under awareness is that the question yeah think about it this way there so throughout your life you have experienced you have observed thousands of different versions of your bodies come and go right like who you are today yes. who you, like the the body you have today is very very different than the body that you had when you were 10 years old yes and you've you've witnessed thousands of personalities change from whoever this Simone believes himself to be yes. or who he believes he what he believes he's like what is what he believes his personality is like so like all of these like this so this my mental identity right this personality and this mm -hmm. body are both perceived to just come and go constantly changing in an awareness that is always just it feels like me right even though these things come and go and we've just like kind of uh looked through how these things are so unstable and they're just constantly changing coming and going yet there's still this something in you that feels constant that okay. feels like me okay and the it state is of presence yeah and it is through the same me the sense of me that you're perceiving your current body and your current personality and look and look in your experience right now when you were 10 years old maybe playing in a park with a very very different personality with a very different belief system very different body did you not feel the same me uh yeah it was uh, the state the same uh, awareness or the same uh, uh, ability to perceive uh, in a sense uh, same ability to perceive uh, the present moment uh, yeah, especially you, as a kid what, what you perceived was very different right what the, the 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 what was on the screen of this awareness was very very different but it yes. was perceived through this sense of all this is happening to me this meanness is is still the same and it has always been the same and it, if you can see it will it will always be the same so the point of self inquiry is not necessarily to see where these perceptions are coming from it doesn't matter to us where these thoughts are coming from it doesn't matter to us where these feelings are coming from where they originate from all that matters is we're trying to recognize to whom they appear Mm. Okay because okay. right now as we're living in this sort of conditioned way who, through our idea of ourselves the idea that we have of ourselves what we call ego pretends to be the one that it, everything is happening to so you say all my perceptions are happening to this body this idea like this identity yes. <laughs> and so so ego says i ego is like the the false i you can say it says yeah these are happening to me but the ego itself is we just we just kind of um you know busted it we just see that the ego itself ch constantly changes right this identity this personality okay. constantly changes and it is observed to change yes. inside what inside my consciousness awareness who's uh, i i uh, inside i you. inside i am i can i say can i say Exactly. Inside, uh, my true self. 
So okay. see, that is that is what we're trying to. Uh, the point of self inquiry is to really unmix your true sense of I, your what I really is consciousness, right? It is already from where you are perceiving. Okay. It is not somewhere else. It's not something you have to find. And that's why when you search for it, you'll never find it because it cannot be found. Think about it like this. Like an example I always give is the eyes. The eyes can see everything. But if you go look for the eyes in the outside world, are you going to ever find it? Uh... <laughs> eyes, can the eyes see themselves? No. <laughs> they not unless also. you put a mirror in front of it, right? <laughs> yes. Self-inquiry is that mirror. Okay, it's the only way to try to perceive it. Exactly. So the perceiver cannot be, and I want you to actually, uh, you know, even inquire this after this call. Can the perceiver be perceived? Can you actually perceive the perceiver? Or can you only be the perceiver, perceiving mm -hmm. all that can be perceived? I think you can feel it, but not actually see it. You can uh, um, be in it. It, now that's a perfect word right there. You can only be it and you can only perceive from it, but it itself cannot be perceived like an object. So the very, very common mis misconception or mistake to fall into in self-inquiry or even meditation. People meditate for years searching for a state, searching for some sort of revelation or whatever. So they're looking for an object, but the self, what they're really searching for can never be an object. It is the eternal subject, right? So in self-inquiry, we can never find something like an object that you can describe where it's like, okay, consciousness has this shape. It has this qualities, right? That's what an object is. Even a thought is an object of your perception. An emotion is an object of your perception. In self-inquiry, we are not interested in what is perceived. We okay. are interested in what is this one that is perceiving it? Right? Okay. So that's that's the whole question. Who am I? Which is the same as the question, who is this me? Or what knows this thought or emotion? Or who is aware of this thought and emotion? Or where am I aware from? Okay. And the moment you ask yourself this question, don't go don't go to your mind because the mind's going to try to you know come up with so many things oh yeah your presence or oh, your consciousness no but those are all concepts <laughs> that aren't going to help you here leave all that aside and simply directly go towards what the question points to right so when you ask okay. yourself who is this what is this sense of me to which these things are appearing and I want you right now to go directly to this just natural sense, me, that, that all this is happening to. And that's fine if you feel it in your body right now, right? That's fine. The mm. sense of me is maybe localized in the body right now. But just simply just go to your most intimate sense of what you feel as me. Okay. This sense is prior to before I am Simone. Okay. Before you are Simone, you just are. Okay, Therefore, okay. you can be Simone, but you just <laughs> are. Okay, and that sense of uh, absolute presence without uh, identity, in a sense. Exactly. Right? <laughs> so, so the point of self-inquiry is not caring at all about what is coming up, right? And I'm not saying like throughout the day, like, oh, you don't care about anything. No, <laughs> right? Okay. Um, but just at least when you're <laughs> sitting down and truly, you know, doing a, a, a ses session of meditation, inquiry, and you're really sitting down and you, these thoughts and emotions are coming up or whatever, don't lose yourself in however interesting these thoughts and emotions may be. Don't, don't give them in, any interest. Give more interest to the one to whom they're arising. So question. Okay. Right? We're not in question. Inquire. What knows this? What is aware of them? Okay. And you'll always say, right, me, obviously. And so okay. simply, 
instead of trying to figure out or label what this me is, simply just go back okay. to acknowledging this sense of me. And just, okay. and just stay with it. Become more interested in this me sense than you are interested in what the me is perceiving. Okay, so I should stop uh, focusing on the perceptions around me, but uh, just being, completely being, and uh, uh, I guess that uh, also if some thoughts arise, uh, those are just passing clouds, passing moments uh, in my awareness. Uh, and just Yeah, so when be... thoughts arise, simply inquire again, right? And you know, because again and again, you'll find yourself maybe just losing your attention in what arises, the thoughts that come and go or emotions. So simply just as soon as you catch yourself, the practice is very, very simple. Just again, inquire, okay, what knows this? What is this me that, that seems to be aware of this? And again, go directly towards what the question points, right? This, this me, what is okay. this me? And just, again, just hold on to your sense of I am, I am aware. And the moment you do this, what you'll notice is that the thoughts automatically subside. And with it, the one that was claiming to be the thinker of those thoughts, right? The identity, the okay. one that was claiming the significance of this thought or this feeling and projecting even more thoughts and whatever, this one also goes with it automatically. The, the second, the moment that you just go back to that sense of me, mind, subsides back into the very source from which it arose you okay. right so it just subsides and and so you know there's a very common tendency especially in the beginning of self-inquiry where people are like okay when i practice this and now okay i'm, I'm in this sense of presence now what don't touch now what <laughs> as soon as now what arises recognize that even that is a thought what is aware of this thought go back directly to that Okay, that's a very big tendency of mine. Uh, now what, now what, now that I am present, uh, what should I look for? Uh, always happens uh, all the time. <laughs> all so the time. Don't, don't touch that now. Because the, the one that says now what is also just that same sense of identity rising that wants something out of self-inquiry, that is constantly searching, that, that you know, it wants to perpetuate itself. It's, it's just mind. It is mind. Right. So okay. let go of even that. Come back to just this me sense. And if you can carry out this process, right? Initially, it does take a little bit of effort. But if you can carry out this process, number one, it will just become more and more natural for you and much more easy. Like it's just easier to come back to this and really live your life through this presence. And second, then the now what can actually present itself to you naturally. <laughs> right. You will okay. quite literally see the difference in the amount of peace and and just balance and happiness that you feel yourself and, and the, the way that you deal with life in a very non-personal way where you know it, it's coming from a much truer space where you you can be in, in involvement you can be going towards a goal or you can have a conversation while not coming from ego and constantly wanting and needing something whereas you, you are just more and more in your sense of presence, in your wholeness, in your completeness. So as you do this, right, um, there's a funny quote, I think it's by, um, I think it's by Muji, and it goes something like this. Self-inquiry, when we ask a question, right, mm -hmm. what is this me or who am I? We're not looking for an answer. It's not about, this, this practice is not about finding an answer, but instead, it's about what is happening to you while you do the practice, while you ask the question. Okay. So simply by, you know, in the moments of you, you just like clinging on to that sense of me, nothing's going to like happen. Don't look for anything to happen. Just be with that me sense. But when this practice is carried out and you become very, very interested in the sense of me, naturally, your sense of self is going to shift from mind to what you actually are. Right okay. now, it's falsely identified with all these million of millions of different Simones and these identities, right? Because right now the sense of self is just identifying with what appears. So if there's a happy thought, 
oh, there's a happy Simone. But if there's a sad thought, then there's a sad Simone. And it, it's, yes. a, it's a very reactive state. And it's completely attached to what is happening on the outside. So if the outside looks good, then this identity is going to be happy. But if it's not, then there's going to be a different identity that claims to be really sad and you're going to suffer that. So this natural, the sense of self right now is identified with mind. It, as you practice this naturally, it will start to, it's like a sliding lever and you'll go back and forth, you know, you'll continue to fall back into mind and come back. So it's, it's a very, very beautiful process. And it, you know, it's a gradual, it's not like a switch. It's a gradual sliding lever and you're not, your sense of self starts to go from mind to being established in your true position. As I said earlier on in the video, the place from which you are already perceiving. You already are that consciousness, that awareness that you seek. Okay. You'll never find it as an object because it is okay. where you are quite literally perceiving from. Okay, but uh, can it uh, also perceive itself? I mean, a pure consciousness, can it uh, uh, taste the quality of itself? Is it possible? It can be, it is self-aware. Right. So the moment you go, go back and recognize I am aware, okay. you are self-aware, you being consciousness, not this identity named Simone is aware of consciousness. Simone is itself okay. just an object that appears within consciousness. OK, that's a very big di distinction. We, we have this common, common misconception that the body and mind, the human being is the operator of consciousness. No. The human being is itself an object that comes and goes within consciousness. Okay. <laughs> you are consciousness, aware of the human being. Okay. <laughs> so consciousness can be self-aware, but it can never know itself as an object where it, it sees, oh, this is, it has these edges, it has this, these qualities. It, it's just self-aware. It has no qualities. It has no beginning and end. It just is. Okay. Okay, because my question about this is that uh, a lot of uh, masters, uh, Zen masters uh, and so on, uh, tell that uh, uh, consciousness is uh, absolute nothing. And uh, this means that uh, uh, if we strip all the ego away, all the matter, uh, physical objects, uh, uh, all that remains is uh, some kind of nothing uh, which can create uh, everything. So this means that uh, if uh, I completely lose my ego, I should feel like uh, nothing, right? Let's put all that to the side. So in this field, you know, it's very, very easy. Like we want to explore these concepts. They sound so interesting and we want to see the truth of them. All you need is this practice. So while through this practice, right, not only is your sense of self going to shift from mind to what you actually are, but also true understanding of, of life, of creation, mm -hmm. of manifestation, right? Manifestation becomes a piece of cake when you're actually doing this deeper practice, right? Because usually we go about manifestation from the surface level of thinking I am the mind and body and I create my own reality. Yes. Very, very false perspective. So um, naturally this true understanding of what you are will more and more unfold to you. So again and again, whenever you see yourself getting lost in these concepts, let them go. It is the easiest way to simply let it go. Okay. And what you're truly interested in will unfold to you. Life will walk you into these understandings and it's going to come from within rather than just from a book or whatever. So read the books and everything. That's fine. Watch the videos and everything. But like at the same time, whenever you see, find yourself getting a little lost or whatever, just like let it go. Anytime you start to create any sort of complexity, which is just a mind, right? Just okay. disengage. Come back to just this presence and through presence this natural understanding will itself unfold okay so so when i do the practices i should let go of all the concept because that's a thinking mind right that's not uh, being exactly that's so the thought. concept doesn't matter and and the to answer your facebook group question you don't have to backtrack these emotions or whatever you don't have to see where they come they're coming from they they are simply consciousness in dynamic form itself so it doesn't matter we don't have to figure out where these thoughts are coming from um it's it's just a fruitless chase instead just come back to the one to whom they're appearing to who to who is perceiving this and just come back to it's so simple no 
But yes. again and again, the mind will create so, so, so many layers of confusion and complexity, and then it keeps you distracted in all that's appearing. And then you completely miss the point of self-inquiry, which is recognizing the perceiver, being the yes. perceiver. So the, it's such a simple practice, again and again, just coming back to this. And as soon as you do, mind quite literally subsides back into source. So earlier in this call, when you said that, <clears throat> that you're coming from the classical meditation background, and you know, I do too. Um, so in, in conventional meditation, we try to train the mind to become silent for little periods of time by focusing on an object. Oh, like look at a candle and focus on it or um, focus on your breath or focus on the sound of the music. Very, very relevant for the beginning stages because that's how we are able to actually train our attention to really at least be here for a little while. So with conventional meditation, we train the mind to become quiet for little periods of time. With self-inquiry, you are quite literally dissolving the mind back into its source. We're not training the mind to become silent. Every single time you inquire, who is this me? And you go directly to what the question points to, right? And just be that presence. Acknowledge that I am aware. In that moment, you will see the thinker and the thought both dissolve. Okay. So they say that the, I am aware, this, this sense of I am, awareness, being aware of awareness, is the highest meditation, most purest meditation, the, the greatest prayer. And it is it is basically like before this flashlight, right? That was lighting up all the objects in the room, all these thoughts, emotions, whatever. And it was entirely invested in what was appearing, what it was lighting up. Now, Simone, the light is becoming interested in where the light is coming from. And it is going, instead of being interested in what is appearing, it is going back to where it is com coming from. So it is a, the true definition of going within. Okay. Like being aware of your own awareness. Okay. <laughs> Lots of right now. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> so you see how simple it really is? Yes, uh, the process is really simple, but uh, uh, there's a lot of resistance. Uh, that's, uh, I think uh, the only problem in this work is that uh, mind uh, resists uh, constantly um, and in my meditation practices uh, once I reach uh, uh, this peaceful state uh, and I generally concentrate in uh, all uh, uh, bodily feelings uh, except from thoughts uh, I see that uh, after a while uh, um, I'm bombarded uh, with uh, thoughts uh, because uh, it's trying to survive and uh, it's very heavy and it's the same in uh, self-inquiry I try to focus and uh, all of a sudden, bam, 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 <laughs> thoughts uh, everywhere uh, to try to stop me in a sense. I think that's the reason. Once you're trying the new pointer, like that, the way that we discussed on this, you will have an easier time. But even then, don't. So when this resistance comes, when this mind comes, who is the one that resists even that? It is just itself, this identity that you, you feel as I, right? That, that you, you claim. So the resistance comes, and the only way that the resistance can stay and perpetuate itself is if you now claim this resistance that, oh, I am feeling this resistance, I am thinking these thoughts, and therefore, now you all, you create another layer, which is resisting the resistance. <laughs> so <Yes. laughs> don't claim that resistance. So see, even when you're doing the inquiry and these thoughts are coming up, and then there's this, there's a sense, oh, this is so hard. Who speaks that? It is it is that it is you being identified with this thought. thought that arises that this is so hard. But Simone, before you actually claim that and you spoke it to, to be your oh, this is my experience. You you didn't take a second to recognize that even that was just a thought that arose. It is not true, it is not reality, but it arose and instantly you just that's me. Oh, that, that, that's my thought. And you spoke okay. it and then it became your experience because quite literally like the thoughts that are coming and going when you, when there's a thought, Oh, I, this is so hard. It's like, you're taking the, 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 these shades and you're putting them on. This is so hard. And now you're experiencing life through this is so hard and it's going to be hard. 
I want you to recognize that even when these thoughts arise and this sense comes, oh, this is so difficult, don't even claim that thought. It is, again, recognize that I am aware of even this thought. Therefore, this thought cannot be me. Okay. It cannot essentially be me, right? I, I observe it come and go. I am constant and I experience this thought's absence, then its uh, appearance, and then its departure. Okay, just like every other thought. Just every like other... everything else. Okay. Everything else. <laughs> just like every Who event is... I see. Exactly, therefore okay. there has to be no identification with anything. Just okay. again and again coming back to what Being... is it that is aware of this? Because as soon as you ask this, what is it that is aware of even this such an intimate sense that feels fear or the, the, this, this intimate sense that this is so difficult? What knows even this? Is this not observed within an awareness? Yes. Yes, it's are you observed. Are you that which is observed or are you the awareness that is ob observing this and reporting this to me? Yeah, it's the awareness that is uh, observing this resistance, fear, uh, all these thoughts. And I awareness identify is, with it. Exactly. The awareness is from which you are reporting this to me is the one that observed the resistance and the one that claims to be suffering the resistance itself. Okay. The, suffering, <laughs> yes. the, the suffering comes attached with a sufferer. When you look for the sufferer, it's nowhere to be found. When you actually inquire, okay, what is so this this got this sense of me that that seems to be afraid or like this this fearful thought is coming and you know it's this one this I am afraid, who okay what is this one that that is projecting this that is feeling this you you look right in your experience where can I locate it? When you look for the one, and I want you to practice this later too, and you could even do it right now. You'll see that. Okay. When you truly look for the one that is thinking this thought, you cannot find it. You cannot find it to have a location, to have certain qualities. You cannot describe it. It's simply nowhere to be found. So this is such a cool practice, and I teach this in my program all the time because uh, different pointers really help, right? So it's like as soon as you're, you're creating all this resistance and these thoughts are coming up, I'm like, I, I tell people, I tell my clients, look for the thinker of this thought. And right now, directly go into your experience and look for, okay, who is the one thinking this or feeling this? And when you look, what happens is the thinker of that thought, the one that says, I am afraid, and the fear, the thought, they both are nowhere to be found. All that remains, you almost might even say, oh, there's just this nothingness there. What is there when nothing is there? Uh, awareness, presence, you. being, yes. All that is, uh, all that remains when nothing is there is you being aware of your of of that nothingness or of your own awareness. So instantly, yeah. you see in this way that these identities, these things that they claim, oh, I am feeling resistance or I am afraid, these themselves are just thoughts, and when you look for them, they are nowhere to be found. It's instant okay. freedom from your fear, instant freedom from your suffering. Suffering is nothing yes. other than a thought which you unconsciously identify with. Yes, identification with uh, the negative thought that creates resistance and uh, suffering. Exactly. Because you attach to it, I can't let go of it, so you become, in a sense, it. Exactly. So you become okay. it, you wear its suit, and then now you experience this reality. Self-inquiry is recognizing that you are none of this, that you are already free, unaffected, already at peace, already happiness, right? That you are that happiness, you are that peace, you are that freedom. Those are your, that's your fragrance. Just, you and happiness cannot be separated just like a rose cannot be separated by the, the fragrance or the smell of the rose. Happiness is your fragrance, love is your fragrance. When you, when you spend more and more time living through this presence rather than living from mind 
you naturally feel more at peace, more at harmony, more at harmony with life, more at uh, like that, this loving joy, right? Whereas yes. the mind, when we're living from mind, it's like we're living from those clouds underneath which is a bright blue sky, always present, constant. But we are just constantly identifying with all these clouds that are passing. Yes. <laughs> unaware of the blue sky. And we're actually, all, the entire like chase of the mind is constantly searching for the blue sky, searching for the happiness. But it searches for them in other clouds. <laughs> yes. And that's also identifying with the, the seeker, the endless seeking. Exactly. That's what I, I tend to do. <laughs> exactly. I tend so, to identify with um, that. A very, very interesting observation. And see, the one who begins this search never finishes the search, but is itself ended by the search itself. So the one who yes. starts the search, Simone, I am the Simone person, and I'm yes, searching sir. for consciousness or awareness. You will never finish the search. You will never find consciousness. But you yourself, this idea you have of yourself, will be finished by the time you end the search. And you will recognize, I was never that. <laughs> that was just an idea passing that I claimed myself to be. Yeah. Great. So it's a beautiful <laughs> process. It's a beautiful process and it is true freedom, right? It is beyond all, yeah. oh, I want to manifest this and that. No, that's all what I call personal freedom. And that's fun too. You know, that's where we start. But this is for the ones who truly wish to go deep and really recognize what they actually are. Yeah, to be really at peace from uh, all the conditioning, yeah, exactly. absolutely. And I've also experienced uh, a little glimpse of that in my classical uh, meditation mindfulness. Uh, there has been some sessions where I've uh, finished the, the session of meditation and I was uh, really happy uh, because I was just uh, perceiving uh, without uh, identifying with being, but just perceiving uh, without judgment. Uh, and it's really, really empowering. It lasts uh, for a few minutes because I'm just a beginner, but, uh, but uh, uh, those few minutes of just perceiving are really uh, a great relief, great, Absolutely. great relief. 100%. And you know what, while we're now carrying on this practice, when you, you know, I want you to even rest this, this thought aside that I'm just a beginner because this understanding, right, that you are already that, right? But the one who claims to be a beginner is also just a thought, is also just yes. an identity that you claim. And then if you claim this identity, then you are going to experience this identity, which is I'm just a beginner. So I'm not really going to make too big, big of leaps right now. I'm, not, I'm just playing around searching for the truth, but I'm not I'm not able to recognize the truth yet. So don't claim this. Yeah. Let it even go. And just again and again, come come completely clear, complete, completely pure and just practice and have no expectations, but simply just come and keep come, like recognizing I am aware. I am aware. And just allow it to take you where it takes you and letting go of all of these identities, not claiming any of them. Great. Very, very awesome good. explanation. <laughs> so that helped clear up everything? Yes. Perfect. Very good. <laughs> awesome. So thank you for watching. Um, everyone, I hope this also helped, you know, many people um, with a lot of the misconceptions and lack of clarity that is natural with self-inquiry, okay? Again, if you want to explore this further, feel free to apply for coaching but down below, okay? This is the exact process I really take people through. So you got, kind of got a taste of that today, all right? Um, so I'll see you guys next time.